what plays into life expectancy factors of these things? Why are they um, uh, doing what they're doing, right? Of course, climate's a big one. Is it a wet and dry or a wet and cold climate? Is it a dry and hot climate or any other mixture of climate, right? It's all gonna um, play into the length of uh, time these shingles last. And then UV exposure. That's a big one. I just talked about that a little bit. And we all know northern exposures are going to be better. They get less direct sun, less UV, that arch enemy. Um, south is better. We could go just as far to say as north and east are better than south and west. And here is a real life example that I love to make a point, And you might not believe it. This is true. That is the same roof, same age, north slope versus south slope. Look how much damage the uh, sun did and the UV did to that south slope. All right, not unusual for to, to find this type of thing. Make sure on your claims you document which slope you're on and maybe the south slope gets damaged easier than the north slope because it's not as in good a condition. And that is the same roof, folks. If you've never thought about it, color of shingles makes a difference. Lighter shingles tend to last longer than darker shingles mainly because they are reflecting more UV and they're not getting as hot and the attic is not getting as hot and heat is a bad part um, uh, for shingles, okay? So lighter, actually longer. And speaking of heat, we need ventilation. Ridge vents, like a metal ridge vent or with the one on the bottom is called a shingle over style ridge vent. We could have what it's called a turtle vent or box vent there at the top. The bottom is, I call that a turbine vent, but if you're in the Southwest, like Texas, maybe you're probably gonna call that a whirly bird, all right? Either way, meant to get heat out of the attic. We also could have um, gable vents and soffit vents designed to bring air in through the soffit, out through the gable, again, to help protect that roof deck and those shingles from heat building up underneath it. If we don't have good ventilation and we don't have the right gaps or spaces in the roof decking, you might, and we have a lot of heat in there, you might actually see the roof, it looks wavy, right? That's probably from an overheated um, roof deck. All right, thickness does matter. You already saw both of those pictures, and I think that's pretty obvious that thickness is going to matter on how, how long it lasts. If you've never thought about it before, the number of layers is going to play into this. Um, more is not always better, and I'll probably say that at least one more time today on layers. Um, they can trap heat in between those layers. All right, especially if you put, uh, if there's gaps in there or it's already a little wavy when you put the new layer on, you're trapping heat in there, heat is not good for shingles. A number of layers is not good. And then maintenance installation is the life, plays into the life, right? Look at that um, um, oval there. Look how narrow that one course is. I guess my only question is how did that even happen? If you're working from the bottom up, um, something weird's going on there. And if they did that poor of a job laying it out and installing it that, that way, what else is wrong on that roof, right? And we must maintain our roofs, folks. You can't have all this debris on the roof and things like that. We're gonna talk more about maintenance later with unsealed shingles, but stuff like this, it's gonna hold moisture. That's not good for the shingles. It's gonna draw bugs. The bugs are gonna draw on other animals and birds and things like that. So um, we need to, ma ma need to maintain our roofs.